Aloha, I'm Wendy Osher with Maui Now, and today we're joined by Dr. Vijak Ayasananda. He's an emergency room doctor at the Maui Memorial Medical Center and here to discuss the process of rapid testing, what it is and why it's being used, as well as universal testing as well. Welcome, doctor. Hi, thank you very much for having me. Thanks for being with us. You know, with the universal COVID testing now taking place at the hospital, can you describe what that process is? And, um, as well as the rapid testing and the difference. Absolutely, so universal testing basically means what it sounds like. We're gonna be testing every single person coming into the hospital. This is trying to provide a, a safety net, catch everyone who is symptomatic as well as asymptomatic. Um, the purpose of that is to try to, one, make sure that we catch everyone, two, try to protect the staff and make everyone aware if we do find someone who is COVID positive. Uh, three, try to preserve our PPE storage. So someone who is low risk, for example, who is negative for COVID and is not an asymptomatic shedder, carrier, or anything else like that, we can um, not have to use up all of our N95s, for example, gowns and gloves, and we'll be uh, preserving it for those who are truly sick in preparation for the future. Um, rapid testing, for example, is only a matter of timing. So uh, rapid testing uh, refers to how fast the test comes back. When we first started all this, um, the rapid testing usually took up to seven days. We had to either send it out to DOH or have to send it out to a private lab, which is in Texas. So turnaround time, three days, seven days, not too useful for someone who's coming into the emergency department or into the hospital right away because we would be treating them as though they were positive no matter what from day one. Um, we now have the capability of two uh, pretty fast machines. I can say they're much more rapid than what we were used to before. Turnaround time has now gone to about uh, three hours and they've surprised me. They've actually gotten a little bit faster and all determines on the timing of when we get the test to the labs. And you had mentioned earlier when we spoke about the accuracy of the testing, what test is being used now and how accurate is it? So our test that we are using right now is called the Luminex test. It's a PCR, so a polymerase chain reaction test that will detect the RNA virus of the disease. So if you have COVID and we can catch it in your mucus or in your nose, we can go through this very elaborate, very amazing process that within hours that we can come up with a result that says yes or no, you're positive. The test we're using, we're trying to use the most sensitive test. So what that means is if we do not have a positive COVID test, we want to make sure and say that you definitely do not have coronavirus. So at 97%, which is uh, assuming the best case scenario, we still would miss out on maybe 3% of the people. Now, this doesn't mean that we would let our guard down and not wear masks and not use any protection. It just means that we uh, wouldn't um, have to use our full PPE stores where we would use our full uh, face masks, uh, full um, shields, for example, uh, gowns and gloves, but we would still be uh, on precautions. Um, there is another test that uh, I can hear about all the time. I'm sure you guys hear about it all the time. It's like a 15 minute rapid test. That one supposedly has about a 15%, if not higher, um, imperfect rate. So what good is a test to say, hey, if your test is negative and we can kind of relax and say you do not have coronavirus, if we're gonna miss a, a good chunk of people. Okay, um, share with us, why did Maui Memorial Medical Center decide to begin universal testing and who's eligible? So the first question, uh, we felt that this was the right time. Um, we're in communication all the time with all the other hospitals in the state of Hawaii, as well as on the mainland. We have a lot of connections, myself included, who have friends and family um, and colleagues in California, Chicago, New York, so we're trying to stay as um, up to date as possible with everyone else and what they're doing, trying to learn from what they did right. And we want to go ahead and make sure we at least do what we would consider the best standard practice for everyone coming into the hospital. That includes universal testing. So that's why we wanted to implement it. We had to wait to make sure that we had the testing capability, the speed and rapidity of the test, and uh, the good sensitivity and the good test itself. Technology is always getting better, so we're always looking for something uh, more faster and more accurate, of course. Now, as far as eligibility, everybody, literally every single person who's going to be admitted to the hospital, and I will say everyone who's 
potentially going to be admitted to the hospital will be tested. Um, I'll give you an example. So for someone who comes in and has cough, cold, travel history, well, we're going to test them. And, you know, even a 97% accuracy rate, we're still probably going to treat them as COVID positive until proven otherwise. Someone, say, comes in for a hip fracture. Uh, they would have to have testing done because they might have to go to the operating room. When I see them in the ER without even waiting for any other symptoms, of course, we're asking and screening. I'm going to be doing the COVID testing as well. So when they do go to the operating room, they can be more on guard or a little bit just using our general practice guidelines with masks and gloves and our usual gowns for sterility. Um, labor and delivery, for example, will also have uh, all testing and everyone else who is going to be a direct admission will need to have testing prior to coming in. That way we try to literally universally test everybody. Now what I was saying in addition to that, the testing is still three hours. Our goal is not to have people wait in the emergency department until after I figure out that the person needs to be admitted and wait an additional three hours to have the test come back. Our goal is to try to get them into the emergency department, get them a good diagnosis, get them to the treatment they need to get to as fast as possible. So if you come in and I have a feeling that you have a good chance, and it could be 50%, 70%, 100% for a stroke or a heart attack or a broken hip, I'm going to be ordering the test the moment you hit the door so that by the time we have the rest of the labs, the x-rays, the CTs back, that we know what your uh, COVID status is and then we don't have to delay your care any further. Um, which brings up an interesting point too. I wasn't sure if you wanted to know, but because we're also testing, not just those who are coming into the hospital, we're catching a lot of those who could be potentially symptomatic in the community. So it's a good surveillance tool as well. So for those that are coming in, where is the testing being done and where do they wait when they're waiting for the results to come back? So the testing will be done in the emergency department. If you are in the emergency department, um, I guess you have to understand that we have a setup so that there is extremely low risk. Someone who's not sick, for example, who may have been in contact with someone with coronavirus and then someone who appears sick enough that they would need to have some type of care be it uh, labs, IV, imaging studies, and probably admission. So those people who are in the second category would come into the emergency department, be placed in a private room and have all the precautions, masks, and everything else in place. For the first group, those who are just in contact but feel very well, they would be uh, left in our tent area, which is set up outside the emergency department, uh, and essentially an open air area that helps kind of decrease the risk of transmission. Um, for those people who are in the emergency department who could potentially be admitted or needs rapid testing, those are the people who will get testing done. And it can take three hours in general. That's how long it would take for the test to be collected, sent to the lab, and put on the machine, and usually get a result back. Of course, uh, we're still limited with the amount of frequency we can do these tests. We've improved it so that every three hours or even faster than that, we're running a new batch. And the batch can be up to 12 tests. And that's more than what we need at this time. Um, and those people within three hours, of course, if you get it right after the first batch, might take a little bit longer than those who would catch it right before the batch goes in. Those who go outside, though, who are low risk, well, we're saving our supplies, uh, our rapid testing, for example, for those who absolutely need to know right now. Uh, those tests at the tent are being sent to Oahu, and I believe the testing is now three days turnaround time, and sometimes better depending on what time of day we can get it to the flight and get it to our uh, clinical lab partners. For rapid testing, do we have enough tests on island? Is there a concern that we might run short? There is unfortunately always a concern, and it's a, a moving target, unfortunately. If we were to run three times as much test because three times as much patients show up, then I'm sure that our supplies will dwindle quickly. But uh, we monitor our census in the emergency department every single day. And unfortunately, we have not recovered to our pre-COVID uh, kind of numbers, uh, which is a whole different subject of my, my concern of people avoiding the emergency department out of fear, uh, still for coronavirus uh, or, or getting a transmission. But uh, with the approximately 90 to 100 patients we see a day, where we're used to seeing maybe up to 140 to 160, uh, we have enough testing capability to keep doing exactly what we're doing. Now, with the return of intra-island travel and uh, no quarantine, as well as um, 
mainland tourism returning. That'll change. And hopefully by then, our testing capabilities will also continue to uh, evolve and ramp up being faster and more prevalent. Great. What if you have a positive result? What happens next for the patient? So if you have a positive result, we have multiple warm units in the hospital. By warm units, I mean these are uh, areas in the hospital dedicated to those who are COVID positive. Uh, they have specialty rooms with specialty antechambers, uh, plastic off areas, increased amount of PPE, as well as mandates that you wouldn't go past a certain checkpoint, for example, unless you were completely protected head to toe. And at the same time, when you leave that area, all that material gets put away in a safe biohazard container so you don't spread it throughout the hospital. Um, I believe there are especially, or more specialty trained staff, being nurses, cleaners, uh, all the other essential personnel, x-ray techs, as well as the doctors who are well aware with the protocol, the procedures, so that they won't accidentally spread it or take it home with them. Okay. Um, you know, there's been a lot of questions surrounding antibody testing. Um, why would somebody want to get an antibody test? Is it necessary? And are you guys encouraging it? So antibody test. Okay, so that's multiple questions right there. Let's see. So why would someone want to get it? Well, of course, everyone wants to know if they had coronavirus. A lot of us have uh, experienced really bad colds and coughs all the way from December and January. And we all wonder, hey, did we have coronavirus? And is there a chance that I could be immune to that going ahead? Um, and unfortunately, the answers are still unclear. Uh, the best research that I've been able to look up, as well as my uh, group and the hospital, is that it's still unclear. All we can say is that um, if you were to have a positive antibody test, it only means that you could have a disease at some point. It could be right now. It could have been months ago, if you were positive. So that usually mandates that you still need to have a secondary test, which is the rapid test that we're offering. Uh, obviously, any healthcare providers who have chosen to get antibody testing, we've had one who is positive, wound up coming back in to get tested. Now, an interesting fact is that you can still be shedding uh, RNA virus from the virus itself for many months afterwards. And we can't tell exactly when this uh, RNA virus is no longer infectious. Um, the best, I guess, uh, expert evidence we have are that after two or three weeks, you probably aren't infected anymore, but you could still be having dead virus particles still in your body, in your system, somewhere that can be detected. But with our rapid testing capability, you can say, wow, your antibody test is positive, so you're positive. And then you have a, a rapid test, which is positive. So now we kind of go, I have to treat you as positive. We cannot take the risk of you coming back to work without the strict CDC guidelines in place that say that you know you are completely safe. Um, would we be pushing for it? When the test gets a little bit more understood, um, there's a lot of friends uh, I have uh, on, the, on Wahoo, for example, who have uh, undergone um, antibody testing, and many of them are negative. So they're not sure yet, like, how could they not be exposed? And we have questions with regards to the quality of the antibody tests. There's obviously a lot out there right now. And we just need a little bit more time uh, as a medical profession and medical field to really figure out which one is the best test, what are we measuring, and how, what are we going to do with those results? Okay. Um, going back to universal testing, do you think that it will help to prevent another like a second cluster at the hospital? Absolutely. So I totally agree with that. Um, universal testing um, will capture every single person who will be coming in the hospital so that even if you're asymptomatic, which is our biggest fear, right? Not many people who come in coughing and waving their arms saying, I have COVID, we're going to miss. But someone who comes in for something uh, otherwise, uh, chest pain, a stroke, for example, a broken bone who needs to have operation, we might not usually, uh, well, I should say we weren't able to test those people beforehand uh, because we didn't have the test capabilities or the rapid turnaround. Now we would. Now we could tell that this person has been exposed to COVID and or is possibly positive. So we would take extra precautions, place them in these warm units, and prevent any further clusters with the same uh, protections I, I described earlier with the staff, Don and doffing all the PPE equipment they have and trying not to take it out of that particular area. 
there's been a lot of uncertainty regarding if a second cluster could occur or a second wave. Um, do you think that the hospital is better prepared for an increase in COVID-19 given, given the experience that they've had with the previous cluster? Yes. So um, I believe, especially looking at all the numbers on the mainland, we're not going to be able to avoid it. There, there will be disease that will be coming back to the islands, and we are definitely much more prepared. We have, uh, well, we implemented something like an emergency command center uh, made up of physicians. So we have clinical staff as well as hospital administrator staff, and we're coordinating much better than we were prior to this epidemic. So we're better prepared for that. Our PPE storage is much higher than what it was when we were all panicking, waiting for that first wave to come. Um, our processes are much more in line. The tent, the uh, processes we have in place in the emergency department, the universal masking procedure, which is one of the most important things within the hospital for both staff as well as patients, will prevent any further outbreaks or clusters in the hospital. And for that matter, with universal testing, that is going to exceed more than just those uh, being admitted to the hospital. I have a feeling that we'll be able to pick up some cases in the emergency department even before we see more testing uh, available in the community. And that might be a good alert that we can share with uh, everyone else, the mayor's office, the government, so that we can be prepared for another outbreak in the community as well. Okay, we have some people in the community that are a little bit apprehensive about going in with all the talk about the, the virus still being around. Are there people, um, have you experienced that from your end, people delaying care? Um, and what would you tell them? Well, yes, unfortunately, I've had several experiences where it's just heartbreaking. Those who have had heart attacks, who have waited at home for three days or five days, where something where we could have taken care of them much better and provide them better service if they had come in right away, which would have happened prior to coronavirus. Uh, they, they chose not to because they were afraid of getting COVID. Um, I just had a, a person recently, unfortunately, break their hip weeks, weeks before coming to the emergency department with multiple factors, but one being I just thought it might get better on its own. I fell walking my dog and I did not want to take the risk of coronavirus. And that's unfortunate. I mean, someone who doesn't need to suffer, um, they, they really should come in. We have taken every precaution. I can tell you, I am more than 100% that if my family members, my mom's grandmother, anyone I know, my friends, my families, my neighbors, anyone gets sick, I would say, please come to the emergency department. It's one of the safest places you can imagine between all the mask uh, protocols, the cleaning, we are prepared and we are guaranteed not to try and you know, we are guaranteed to prevent any further spread to the community from anyone to anyone else who's even just coming to the emergency department. Thank you so much, Dr. Aya Sananda, for joining us today. Um, if you'd like more information about the emergency room procedures, universal testing, rapid testing, and antibody testing, visit us online at mauinal.com. I'm Wendy Osher.